Over the last year, we have heard so many stories about what God has been doing across our community. And it's time for us to come together in prayer as one community to hear those stories of what God's done and encounter Him in a new way. We would love you to join us as we spend 24 hours praying and fasting from Friday the 18th of June to Saturday the 19th of June, 7 p.m. to 7 p.m. The 24 hours are gonna be split into different sessions, each taking a special focus in prayer. Some sessions are gonna focus around corporate prayer where we'll be gathering together in Zoom. There's gonna be some practical activities and then there's also gonna be a time for worship and breaking bread. We wanna encourage you to gather during the 24 hours with a group of six or with another family, encouraging each other as we seek God together. And if you're not able to meet up with people, don't worry, all of the events are gonna be accessible online. So why don't you sign up now by clicking the link in the description to receive the full itinerary, some links and details, and a free gift. Hello and welcome, my name is Victor. And my name is Sharon, and we are your hosts for today's service. I'd encourage you now to just prepare your heart to worship the Lord. He is so deserving of our praise. But also we love it when you interact with us. So I would also encourage you to make use of the comment facility, to send us some likes, and also do please share this feed with other people, your friends and your family, so that they can join in too and just be blessed by all that we're bringing to you today. And now we're gonna go over to a time of worship with Ted and the team. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heaven. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.
blessings flow praise him all creatures here below praise him above the heavenly host praise father son and holy God is sovereign. <laughs> there is no God like our God. Awesome in majesty. Holy and righteous. That's the God you and I serve. <laughs> Woo! That's right. Hey! We know this. The beginning and the end. The same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll praise your name. I'll praise your name. My Alpha and Omega. My Alpha and Omega. Beginning and the end. Beginning and the end. The same yesterday, today, and forever. The same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll praise your name. I'll praise your name, hallelujah, holy, holy, you are worthy of my praise, hallelujah, holy, holy, you are worthy of our praise. Hey, come on, wherever you are this morning, put your hand like you mean it. Our God is good. He's faithful to the end. He doesn't give us yesterday's blessings. His mercies, His blessings are new each and every morning. Ha! Ah, you ready? So let's sing this together. Here we go. Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll praise your name. I'll praise your name. Your name. Our friend Omega. Beginning and the end. Beginning and the end. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll praise your name. I'll praise your name. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Holy, 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 you are worthy, you are worthy of, my of my praise. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Holy, 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 you are worthy, you are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah, holy, 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 you are worthy. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll praise your name. I'll praise your name. Hallelujah. 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 We sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll praise your name, hallelujah. Holy, holy, you are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, oh God, you are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, oh God, you are worthy. You are worthy of my praise. 
name. I'll pray your name. Hallelujah. Holy, 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 holy. Oh God, you are worthy. You are worthy. I'll pray. Hallelujah. Holy, 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 holy. You are worthy. God is good. A faithful, faithful God to the very end. He never leaves us forsaken. He never leaves you and I abandoned. That way you and I can say with confidence that He is. You are. God, you are. My God. You have time and seasons in your hand. You called for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God you are. But you have chosen to call me Come on, wherever you are this morning, just lift up your hands in your living rooms, with your children, in the kitchen, in the bedroom, wherever you are, and just worship Him. Just lift up holy hands, holy hands unto God. Our Father, our friend, our Savior, our Maker, everything that we want Him to be, that's who He is. You have time and seasons in your hands. You called for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God you are. But you have chosen to call us your own. God from beginning to the end there's no place for agony you are God all by yourself mm. God from beginning to the end there's no place for agony you are God all by yourself come on just lift up hands and worship him oh oh we worship you We bless your name. We honor you, God. God all by us. You are God all by yourself. Oh, you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. But you are an amazing God. Worthy, 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 worthy. But you are an amazing God. Are you God? God. But you are an amazing God. You are worthy, oh God. To receive all glory. Worthy, 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 worthy. 
the are you God holy 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 you are God from beginning to the end there's no place for agony you are God all by yourself. Mm. You are God all by yourself. You are holy, worthy, mighty, beautiful beyond description, too marvelous. Cattle on a thousand hill belongs to you, God. You sit enthroned in majesty, clothed in righteousness. You are God. I will exalt you, God. I will exalt you high above, high above all gods. High above anything, because you are my master my Savior, my friend. I cast my mind to Calvary Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on the rugged tree. His body bound and drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone. Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord.
forevermore for endless days me and my house will sing of your praise oh lord oh lord our God. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. We hope that you're enjoying being a part of our community, and we'd love for you to partner with us as we seek to reach people with the hope of Jesus. One of the ways that you can do this is through giving. Everything we have has been given to us by God, and we have the choice to give back to him and put our trust in him, even when circumstances seem hard. God is inviting us to put our trust in him and give cheerfully. If you're wanting to take a step of trust in God today and give to the mission of New Life Church, click on the link in the description or scan the QR code that's on the screen now. You can give either a one-off gift or set up a recurring donation securely online. Thank you so much for partnering with us on our mission to reach people with the love of Jesus. I'm going to pray now and give thanks to God. Father, we thank you for all you have given us. And as we give back to you, we pray that you will multiply our gifts and use them for your kingdom. We pray as people give to your work that you provide their every need as your word says. Amen. Thank you to Ted and the team. Let's just stay in this warm place of worship now, keeping our hearts really soft towards God, because we'd like to bring some prophetic words that the team ahead of this meeting prepared. So just will you put yourself in an attitude of receiving and listen and see if any of these words speak to you? Victor. While the team were praying, they got a word for someone out there whose life feels a bit messy for you and you're wondering and you don't really know what to do. And God is trying to say to you that it's like when you're making a cake, the whole situation looks very messy, but it all comes together very beautifully. So just trust him. It is going to be beautiful at the end. And one of the other words was about somebody standing at a bus stop, wanting to get onto the bus, but not flagging the bus down as it comes past and letting it go. And that really resonated with me because this week I've had a lot of dreams about transport and I've dreamt about aeroplanes and trains and cars and all sorts. And a very good friend of mine said that is to do with new seasons and stepping into different things. So I would encourage you, if you feel like you are letting that bus go pie this week, put your hand out, trust God and get on the bus. He will not let you down in that situation. He's waiting for you to journey with him. And in a similar way, there's another word about somebody who you're looking at us coming out of lockdown and actually it's making you feel quite anxious and you're concerned about meeting people again. You're concerned about all sorts of things changing and being different. And God's word for you today is you can trust me. I will keep you safe. And so I would encourage you to take all that fear and anxiety and just give it to the Lord. And as you do, ask him to just give you back his peace and his joy and his assurance that you are safe in him. I'm going to pray really briefly now. Father God, I thank you that you speak to us so clearly and so often that you have things you want to say to each of us individually. And I pray for those who may have heard those words and said, yes, that speaks to me. Will you bless them now? But also for everyone who is listening, I pray that this week they will hear your voice, know that you are speaking directly into their hearts and that we will all just be willing to respond and to say yes to everything that you have for us because you are a good father and you love us and you have good things for us and we can trust completely and utterly in you. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to continue with the worship as we go into a time of learning and listening from God. And today we've got Bill, who is one of our church leaders here at New Life. 
And he's a great man of wisdom and it's always fun listening to him. So if you want to just sit down and receive especially the word of God from through, through Bill today. Hey, it's uh, great to be with you today. Uh, I'm uh, doing the second part of this series, My True Self. I've been tasked with a subject today called My True Self, A Work of Art. I'm so looking forward to sharing God's word with you. Uh, if you've got a Bible where you are, would you turn to Ephesians 2 and verse 10? Because that's the main verse that I'll be addressing today. Uh, I'm actually going to read Ephesians 2 verse 10 from the Amplified Bible uh, because it really explains it clearly uh, for me. So let me read this God's word to you as we start. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, live in the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Isn't that a wonderful verse? I want to tell you right at the start of this message that God has a master plan for you. I also want to refer you to another scripture uh, in Romans 5 verses 18 and 19. Uh, and I'm using the message uh, translation uh, for this. So let me read this to you. Just as one person, Adam, did it wrong and got us all into this trouble with sin and death, another person, Jesus, did it right and got us out of it. But more than just getting us out of trouble, he got us into life. One man said no to God and put many people in the wrong. One man said yes to God and put many in the right. Isn't that wonderful? In our spirits, God says that we're already perfect. And the more we realize and understand, the more our outer lives will change as a result of that. The Apostle Paul says in Philemon 1 verse 6 that our faith becomes effective by acknowledging the good things that are in us in Christ Jesus. That's why Christian community is so important that you can build one another up when we get together. That's why reading the Bible is so important to understand what God wants to say to us. These are all positive things that we should do. Now, I want to flip the coin if I can today. And you know, if you've heard me before uh, uh, preach that I do things a little bit back to front, but I want to uh, talk about God's master plan. But something, one of the biggest things that stops us living in the reality of God's word that we've just read is a constant attack on our identity, who we are. I want to recommend three books. I've got them here on my table today. Uh, we're going to put these in the description on Facebook and YouTube uh, so that you can, you can pick them out. Uh, Dwayne Sheriff, Identity Theft is one of the uh, good books that I've read. And I, 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 I implore you to just take this book and read it for everything that's in it. You will find that God will speak to you very, very clearly. One of the books that I also have by my bedside is Unlock Your Identity by T.D. Jakes. It's a daily reading book, but it's all about my identity and who Christ says I am. Again, I, I, I say go out and buy that. It will do you good. And my book of the year uh, for 2020 was by a lady called Ginny Bergen. It's a book called Overpowering Nemo. It is one of the best books I've read in a number of years. Ginny, her story is very similar, uh, similar to mine and probably uh, to yours in some cases. Uh, she came from a working class background and as soon as you could work, you would work. Education was replaced with toil. She was abused physically and verbally by her parents. She was sexually abused by her uncle and suffered horrendous things. She was continually told that she was a nobody and that she would be forever useless. I forgot to tell you that the word Nemo on this book uh, is a Latin word for nobody or useless. And this is how Ginny felt. She was bullied at school and physically abused uh, by teachers. But God had other plans for her. And on her way to a nightclub, she missed the bus. 
and ended up going to a Christian youth club with her friends who invited her. And she was bored and she picked up a book that she didn't know was the Bible and she opened it at, uh, at a book called Jeremiah. And she read a verse that uh, she would be a prophet to the nations. Doesn't God move in mysterious ways? Because that is exactly what Ginny is today. She is a prophet to the, to the nations. See, this book rings a big bell with me because I had a similar upbringing. Uh, I went to school. I was severely bullied by school, so much so by the teachers that were teaching me uh, that I uh, st played truant, stayed off school for weeks and had to go and see doctors because they thought there was something wrong with me. But it was the abuse that I was taking, the physical abuse of being beaten at my desk in front of other children made me not want to go near to school. The abuse I had of going for swimming lessons and being thrown in the six foot deep end of a swimming pool and left, had never been in a swimming pool in my life and a fear of drowning came on me and someone had to pull me out. And that was the type of thing I live with. I also live with uh, bullies in the playground and it was a difficult time. And these things uh, formulate how you think and as you grow up, you grow up with all of this baggage and things. Uh, but I want to tell you something marvelous. Uh, there's an awful lot of sad things that have gone, but when God breaks into your life, he breaks in in a real way. And I ended up, just after I was born again, going to a Christian camp with a whole bunch of folks in this big, luxurious mansion house in uh, North Wales. And it was so cold in the room, uh, one of the guys asked me to get some log, uh, uh, wooden logs from down in the cellar to put, put on the fire. And as I was walking through the hall with all of these logs in my hand, uh, one of the guys who was there, Bryn Jones, he stopped and he said, Bill, Bill, he said, I see God speaking to me to tell you that you are going to be a firelighter. And that word has stuck with me ever since that day in that mansion in North Wales. And I felt that God said to me, from all of the abuse that you took and that you had to deal with, you're going to encourage people. You are not going to let bullies bully you anymore. You are not going to see other people be bullied by bullies. And I felt that that's what the calling of God was on my life, to be a firelighter, to be an encourager, to see other people come out of the trauma and the difficulties of the past and to take hold of our standing in Christ. Nothing in this wide world has so limited the church's influence, blunted believers' effectiveness as identity theft. The church has grown up talking and teaching about ministry and destiny, and we've missed the focus on the real issue of identity in Christ. It's time for us to put that at the fore of the things that we do. You must quit seeing yourself as a natural man or a woman or a nobody. There is so much more to you than what you see in the bathroom mirror or what's in your bank account or your job title. There's so much more to you than the shape of your body, your wit or your skills at work. The Spirit of God dwells in you. He reveals Jesus and the amazing effect of the restoration that he's created in your life. We are to see ourselves as sons and daughters of God. We are being born in his likeness. So the topic at the start was my true self, a work of art. So if I look in the mirror of God's word, I see great things. I see the person that God intended me to be in Christ. And because of my new condition in Jesus, the Bible says that I'm righteous and holy and a child of God. And the more I walk in this newness of life, the more things I say and do come into agreement with God. This is because all my doing comes out of my being. The deeds I do are simply a byproduct of who I am. Your identity is the key to your destiny. The goal of the enemy is to steal the identity of believers. If Satan can get you to forget about who you are, then you'll forget about your destiny. 
Now, you might be crying out this morning, help, I want to get my life back. You just need to know who you are in Christ. Identity is a powerful thing. When you learn who you are and where you stand, you'll stop wandering around, wondering what my next step is. Before you can walk in your destiny, you've got to learn to walk in your identity. Before you can walk in God's plan for your life as a father, a mother, a husband, a wife, as a man or a woman, before you can walk in God's promises, you have to understand your identity. When you forget who you are, that's when you make dumb choices. My identity determines my destiny. It determines how I act. It determines what I do. Sooner or later, we have to quit blaming what everyone else has done to you in life. Look in the mirror from this day forward and say, my destiny is going to be decided by who I am in Christ and the choices I make. I think the cry of God's heart today is, I don't want you to deal with destiny issues. I want you to deal with the identity issue. I want you to fully understand what my son has done for you, the price that he paid at the cross to put everything right so that he could have fellowship, so that he could have communion with you, so that he could guide your daily steps, so he could show you which steps to take. That's what identity is all about. Is it time then to shake off all of this stuff that's gone on? I still have to make decisions on a daily basis. I told you about some of the stuff that I went through, the abuse in the school system. It could have scarred me for life, but Jesus stepped into my life and gave me a whole new perspective. It took a little while to undo those things and to forget them. It took a little while to understand those things, but God has a master plan for me and he's got one for you today. Every hour of every day, you have a decision to make. You must decide, how will I see myself? Will I be in union with God through Christ and all his provision for my life? My friends, today, that decision is yours. Let me read the verse that I started with at the start of this message. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, live in the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Are you ready to walk in the good of that? Can you take that verse and apply it to your life this week? Can you take it, go find a quiet place and sit down and say, God, I really want to understand who I am in you. Would you give me a revelation of the truth that Christ has brought me into? Rick Renner, uh, who is a wonderful writer, Christian writer, uh, in his book called Sparkling Gems from the Greek. It's a devotional book, so don't think I'm into <laughs> Greek stuff. It says this, because Paul uses the word poema to explain what happened when you became a child of God, it emphatically means that on the day that you got saved, God put forth his most powerful and creative effort to make you new. Once God was finished making you new, you became a masterpiece, skillfully and artfully created in Christ Jesus. There's nothing cheap about you at all. God's creative, artistic, intelligent genius went into making, uh, went into your making. Look how much you've been given in Jesus. Don't you think it's time to stop moaning about how dumb, stupid, ugly, or untalented you feel compared to others? Those feelings, they're all lies. Some of that might have been true before you were born again, but none of it is true now you know 
that you were in Christ. God turned you into something spectacular. That's who you are now. So you need to lay claim to your new identity, adjust your thinking and talking to reflect who you really are. As I close this message in, I want to do something. I want to pray for you wherever you are. If you're watching on Facebook for the first time or you're on the YouTube or your friends have passed this message to you, I want to say that Christ, first and foremost, has a plan for your life. There's no need for loneliness anymore. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your savior before, I'm asking you to pray a simple prayer right now. As I pray this prayer, I want you, wherever you are watching this, to pray. And the prayer is very simple. Please, Jesus, would you come into my life, fill me with your Holy Spirit, and give me a fresh identity. Amen. Now, I also want to address people who have been walking with Christ for a number of years, but still struggle on a daily basis still are haunted by the fact that I'm not good enough, I'm not perfect enough. I want to break the power of the bonds of those things that are on you right now. And as I speak these words and you're watching this online, I believe that God supernaturally wants to come to you right where you are and something supernatural is going to happen to you as I pray. I now break the bonds of this uh, uh, things that have sat on our shoulders the chains that have been applied to us that we've still not broken free. I break the power of those things in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare that you will walk in your identity that Christ has already given you in a more powerful and stronger way. I have a prayer just to close this out. But if you've made a decision to follow Jesus today for the first time or you're renewing your walk with him, why not leave something in the Facebook description or the YouTube description and we'll get one of the people here at the church to contact you. If you felt some things break off your life today because of what has been said, again, leave some comments so that we can follow up and, and just chase these things through with you to make sure that you are on a really firm footing to move forward. So this is a closing prayer. Lord, forgive me for being so negative and for talking so badly about myself after you've given me so much. I have no excuse for accepting defeat or low esteem as a way of life because you have made me totally new. Help me renew my mind to the truth about who you have made me to be. And help me guard the words of my mouth so that instead of speaking evil of myself, I affirm the truth about who I am in Christ. I pray this in Jesus' name. And I begin to see myself my true self as a work of God, uh, as a work of art as God intended. I appreciate you listening to me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Welcome, David. Hi, Steve. How nice to you see do? you again. Yeah, how are you doing? You okay? I am doing very well. Thank you very much. Enjoying lockdown? Um, I'm enjoying coming out of lockdown. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> David, tell me a bit about yourself. Sure. So my name's David Rees. Um, I've lived in Milton Keynes since uh, I was about nine years old, 1970, 1980. I'm married uh, with two grown-up children. And um, yeah, that's me. Wow, two grown-up children as well, one of which recently got married. That's right, yeah. We had a lockdown wedding, um, which was pretty special, uh, but very different. Mm. So, David, tell me about why you became a Christian. Sure. Um, so, I became a Christian when I was uh, 22. 
And at that time, I was really searching for meaning in life. Um, I'd, I'd a few years before suffered a real family tragedy, um, and that had made me really question my, my place in the universe. Yep. Um, and, and I was really starting to ask, what on earth is the point of life? Um, I knew I went to work the whole time, but actually working in of itself was meaningless. And I was really trying to find out what, what life was about, and I actually gave up work. I was gonna do the hippie thing, and I was gonna go out and find myself. Um, that was an interesting experience. Right. So what happened then? Sure. How did you get from there to...? So the, the short story is, uh, Jesus found me before I found myself. Okay. Um, the, the slightly longer story is that I looked around at different philosophies and different religions uh, around the world. But actually, I had some, I'd, I'd made some good friends who went to a church locally. And um, it was through their friendship um, that I had a really, um, really big encounter with God, a really okay. meaningful encounter with God. And, and that changed the direction of my life, really. Um, and it gave me a, a sense of meaning. It gave me a sense of, of purpose. It almost put like a, a framework around my life. Um, it girded uh, the foundations of my life and really helped me to, to flourish. So, you know, uh, when I talk about marriage, I can talk about a flourishing man right. marriage. When I talk about my children, I see them flourishing in the same way as I, I experienced um, God for myself, which was absolutely amazing. Excellent, excellent. So what difference would you say he's made? So, so just talking about the workplace, um, and I always had this sense of, of wanting to know what my destiny was yeah. and why I'd been put on the planet and um, understanding what, what purpose um, I, I was here for. And as I said before, I'd actually given up work because I, I didn't see uh, the meaning in it. Um, and, and shortly after I became a Christian, uh, I felt uh, God guide me, and that's one of the really special things, is having a, a father who guides me through life. And I felt God say to go back into accountancy. Um, so I went back to accountancy, and I worked in lots of different industries and got lots of different experience. But then after about 25 years of working in accountancy, I felt, um, or I got invited to take a secondment into a, a role dealing with corporate culture. Okay. And as soon as I got into this role, I felt absolutely made for the role. I felt I came alive. Um, one of the managers actually said to me, this, this is kind of your calling, isn't mm. it? This is what you're made to do. And, and I suddenly realized that through all these things that God had led me, he'd led me to this moment. And I'd found this kind of destiny and, and this really special moment in, in my life personally. Excellent. David, thanks for sharing with us. Really appreciate it. So David talked about meaning. That's one thing that we all have the question of. We all ask, why am I here? It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, if you're famous or not known. That question applies to all of us. In the Bible, it says, God has placed the eternity on the heart of man. We know that there is something more than just us, more than the nine to five but that God has a plan and a purpose for us. The problem is that we've chosen to go our own way. We've chosen to turn away from a relationship with God and lead life how I want to do it. And the Bible calls that sin. But the thing that we found is that actually nothing bridges that gap. It doesn't matter if you're a good person. You can have all the possessions in the world. You don't feel fulfilled. There is nothing that can replace what we're looking for in the eternity of God. And today you might be watching this thinking, actually, I want what David has. I want to know that relationship with God. And you know what? Right now you can. You see, God is holy and he cannot accept sin, which means that punishment for sin, death, has to be paid. But he loves you and I so much that he wasn't prepared to just leave it that you had to die. And so he sent his son Jesus to come to this earth to live a sinless life and then to die for you. And right now in this moment, you have a choice. The choice is, 
Who will die for your sin? Will it be you? Or will you accept what Jesus has done for you so that you can come back into a relationship with God? You know, if you do that, it will mean giving your life to Jesus. But David and I have both done that, as have millions of others, and I can guarantee you it is the best thing you'll ever do. So if you want to make that decision to follow Jesus today, I'm going to pray a simple prayer now, and I'm going to ask you to follow through with me, okay? So just say these words quietly in your heart. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you love me. Thank you for sending Jesus to die in my place. Forgive me for what I've done wrong. Come and be the leader of my life. Now, if you've prayed that prayer, we are so excited. It says that there is a party in heaven for everybody that responds to Jesus. Right now up on the screen, you'll see a link that we'd love you to click on about taking the next step. We'd love you to fill that in so that we could stay in contact with you. It might be that you've not prayed that prayer today, but you've got some questions. Again, just click on that link. We'd love to be in contact. Have a great day. Thank you so much, David, for sharing so powerfully with us, for you stepping out boldly to seek God. As I mentioned at the start, we would absolutely love to interact with you. We love to hear from you. So I'd encourage you right now to go on to the Next Steps page of the New Life Church website. Maybe you made that decision to follow Jesus this morning. We'd love to hear from you. Perhaps you have a prayer request. We absolutely love praying for people. So do let us know whether it's something small or something big. We would love to pray for you. And also, God just does so many amazing things throughout every week for us and with us. And so if you have a good news story, maybe you spoke to a neighbor, maybe you did a random act of kindness, or maybe, you know, God just really spoke to you. We would love to hear from you. So go to Next Steps, get in touch. And thank you so much for spending time with us. We'll see you next week.
Thank you.